Typically, we don't respond to video challenges. They're a waste of time because the points are so diametrically opposed and usually nonsensical from the challenger and certainly unusual at best for most. However, for this one and only time, we will refute the video challenge of YouTube kook. Detector. Here is one of his unusual video challenges. It's most unusual because it has a static reference point of entirely unrelated material, which we find not only curious, but rather amusing, to be honest. It's bizarre and comical. We have sped up his video slightly to allow more time to respond to the whatever you call them. This is a response to his unusual video about our recent video on Australia's hottest year ever, which it's actually been. Here is YouTube kook detector's first remark. Ladies and gentlemen, we have yet another McCainness through cut and paste global warming video to debunk. This time it's her Australia's hottest summer on record. You'll notice these links. They actually point to facts and reality. We like to support all our videos with actual facts, as peculiar as that might sound. So here you have it. We'll also include these in the sidebar so you can go right to them and look at the actual information about it being Australia's hottest winter ever and summer expected to be even hotter, breaking every record for over 150 years or more. 11, 2009, November 2009. Again, this user, and I pointed this out in my other responses to her, Except for the simple matter of hundreds of years of temperature record keeping, which shows an increase in temperature over the 200 years. He's focusing on one hot summer and not looking at the big picture. First, let's rattle off a few more cold spells, which using her reasoning would prove a point wrong. We'll comment on the unusual content in a moment, but here, notice that this YouTube kook detector has said her referring to the seven of us as female, probably meant as some sort of condescension. Of course, that has nothing to do with YouTube kook detectors argument. Last month, Australia was set to have its earliest October snowfall ever. Now let's just take a look at Austria's size. So maybe if a mosquito breathed, it might actually change the weather in Austria. Here it is on a global map and we'll zoom in so you can see it and of course you'll see Australia down and off to the right which is about 5,000 times the size of Austria. Facts and relationships to reality always play a crucial part in presenting a point or trying to debate conjecture or supposition. Idaho and western Montana were breaking cold records by several degrees and that threatened to threaten the potato crop. Let's take a look at Montana and Idaho in relationship to the size of the United States of America, which is about the same proportion as Australia. Not to mention other world temperatures that 90% of scientists agree are warming rather rapidly over the course of the last 200 years, especially in the last 50, where the age of technology and coal mills and coal furnaces and automobiles took shape and became an integral part of society. Here we see Montana and Idaho in the context of the size of the United States. Throw in YouTube kook detector's third reference point, Austria, and they're about the size of Texas. All three of them together, of course. And here you can see it on the map. It's always important to realize how size affects the heat, like dropping one ice cube into a swimming pool and suggesting that the whole swimming pool has become cooler because 3.2 inches of the cubic footage of the pool, of a 10,000 square foot pool, have become a little bit cooler. Temporarily, of course. Till the ice melts. We have this. The average October temperature was 50.8 degrees Fahrenheit. 
of 50.8 degrees Fahrenheit was 4 degrees Fahrenheit below the 20th century average and ranked as the third coolest based on preliminary data. Oh no, it's global cooling. Now let's start with some of the nonsense coming out of this video about the... Once again, it's, it's always better to present facts rather than allegations. 2009 is shaping up to be one of the hottest years on record, along with 10 of the last 12, which have been the hottest in over 150 years of global temperature record keeping. Also, it, admittedly, by 90% of scientists that the Earth is heating. One 15 minute mark, roughly. We're subjected to major hand wringing over hotter temperatures, causing all kinds of diseases, stroke, brain damage, lower IQs among Chicagoans who mop floors, etc. This is obviously meant as some sort of an insult, but again has no bearing on the argument. It's just thrown in for whatever purpose, just like the static object in YouTube kook detectors unusual videos. And of course, YouTube kook detector is commenting about an actual video news story by an Australian journalist about the simple fact that it's the hottest winter on Australia's history in over 150 years. This is simply false. I'll give you a sampling of the research and again all the relevant links will be on the right side, something McCain is through doesn't normally do so people can't check out her statements. We generally don't provide links because most of the subject matter is obvious, but when someone doesn't know what they're talking about and needs some reference point, we put in a link. Like here, where it's actually loaded with links to refute every point that YouTube kook detector has wrongly asserted. In a review article published in the Southern Medical Journal, this is in 2004, Keating and Donaldson of Queen Mary's School of Medicine and Dentistry at the University of London began the main body of their text with a clear declaration of the relative dangers of heat and cold when it comes to human mortality. Cold-related deaths are far more numerous, is what they said. Cold-related deaths are far more numerous than heat-related deaths in the United States, Europe, and almost all countries outside the tropics, and almost all of them are due to common illnesses that are increased by cold. So what are the mechanisms by which cold kills? Keating and Donaldson report that, that coronary and cerebral thrombosis account for about half of all cold-related deaths, and that respiratory diseases account for approximately half the rest. With respect to the first of these sets of problems, they say that cold stress causes an increase in arterial thrombosis because the blood becomes more concentrated and so more liable to clot during exposure to cold. It probably doesn't need to be pointed out again, but the planet isn't cooling, it's warming. So the effect of deaths caused by cold doesn't have any impact here. What does matter is the significant increase in disease caused by global warming, limited water supplies, the spread of disease, and those sorts of things that actually pertain to reality, rather, again, than conjecture that's not based in any fact or any science. The sequence of events as they describe it is that, quote, the body's first adjustment to cold stress is to shut down blood flow to the skin to conserve body heat which produces an excess of blood in central parts of the body, and that to correct for this effect, salt and water moved out from the blood into tissue spaces, leaving behind increased levels of red, red cells, white cells, platelets, and fibrinogen that lead to increased viscosity of the blood and a greater risk of clotting. With respect to respiratory-related deaths, the British scientists report that the infections that cause them spread more readily in cold weather as people, quote, crowd together in poorly ventilated spaces when it is cold. There is very little truth to the higher temperatures bring more diseases diatribe. Lastly, let's go over climate change in Australia from the distant past. Uh, I already went over climate change in Canada, the Sahara, and China long before man had modern inventions. McCain has has ignored that in her responses, obviously. Let's look at the Australia, New Zealand region. We've actually never responded to YouTube kook detector ever before. The following was reported in Global and, Global and Planetary Change 33. The authors report the results of the first millennium length tree ring chronology for New Zealand. No long-term trend was evident in the tree ring derived austral summer temperature record over the entire length of the study, including the overlapping instrumental portion of the record that extends from 1866 to 1999. Hence, neither the tree ring data nor the actual temperature measurements from the area provide any support whatsoever for the climate alarmist claim of unprecedented warming over the last hundred years. YouTube kook detector has used Montana, Idaho, Austria, and New Zealand in the comparison to the gigantic continent of Australia. And since our video is on Australia and global warming, 
it can hardly be refuted by mentioning that your bathroom is a little bit cooler, while the other 5,000 square feet of your home are warming at an increased rate, intensely, over the last 50 years where we've had the automobile, and coal-burning mills, and industrial pollution on a scale so large that it's alarming. One need only look at the facts to arrive at the obvious conclusion. We've included the information so you can take a look at the articles yourself and see exactly what the record heat was in Australia, a gigantic landmass the size of the entire United States of America.